hi hi welcome to joy Fido international uh, how are you today hoping you're doing good we're excited to be here as always um we spoke with you not too long ago about two days ago and when we did that we had quite a lot of response and people were really um excited about what was discussed and they wanted to hear more and that gave me an exciting feeling because that shows that the messages I'm coming across with is actually getting to someone and people feel contributing to their life. And you know what we represent here, especially with Joy Fido International? <clears throat> the plan is to inspire you to success, you know, support you to grow and become a better person. So that's the dream for us and that's what we hope to share with you encourage you to become the best of you that you can find. So this series is going to be just about messages to young people. So messages to the youth, messages to young people, um, just to support your growth. In that particular video, we did talk about 10 major things that really help to create a stress-free life for you. So Today I'm going to start by picking on each of the things to go into details in each of them. Um, I may not pick out the whole ten, I'll see how far I can go with it, depending on my work pressure. But when I can, I'll be coming up with them as they come to me too. So today's major topic is about love. I don't know if I've introduced myself, my name is Joy Fido, and so welcome on board. Now feel free to send us messages, feel free to chat with us, especially on Instagram. Um, we like to share what we do with you. Okay, so message today is to you about love. That's what it is. Now why am I picking on love? Because love is something of the heart. And love is what gets us started in our life. It is that stage where you start to think who am I? What am I trying to do? Um, who can I do this with? What makes me a stronger person? What makes me a weaker person? And so it starts from your heart. And everything you become in life starts from the heart. If you're going to be loving people, it starts from your heart. You're not going to be nice to people, it starts from your heart. You're going to be friendly. So everything we are starts from the heart. That's to me, I call it the kitchen of life, you know, where you actually sit down and put the ingredients together and start cooking. So it is in our hearts that everything that makes who we are starts. And that's the first place we should start from as we begin to create a better life for ourselves. So as a mother, mother of four children, uh, my children are now grown up um, in their early 20s and you know, then I got the, the range in the mid-teens. So, is that time that a mother would like to share what life is all about to a child? I mean, it's, you're no longer at that stage where you're still wondering what is life about. And so that's, that's the, the leg I stand on to come and chat with you. In the sense of, I'm taking you as my child. And what would I be saying to you? How would I guide you? How would I support you? Um, on the other hand, I never experienced that because my mom died when I was really young and I never really had anyone in my life that guided me. It was such a surreal experience. No one guided me and sometimes when I chat with my kids, I keep saying to them, I wish someone had told me something. But what I did was I read a lot of books which you know like if you follow my my YouTube uh, videos, you, you hear me talk about books, books a lot. I read a lot of books and what happened was as things were unfolding in my life, I felt I'd seen it somewhere, I felt I'd experienced it, I felt someone had said something to me. But all this came from me reading books. So there are people out there who really don't like reading, who don't want to know anything about books, they don't want to open a book, they find books really annoying, irritating. And so people like that will struggle. And that's why we talk about knowledge is power because what you don't know, you don't know. And then you become ignorant about it. So the more you read, the more exposed and informed you become. But 
for people like me, apart from the reading, I've actually experienced a lot of things in life. I mean, for my age, I have seen a lot. And so this is the, this is the kind of luggage I bring along with me, which I'm happy to offload some of them and share it with the rest of the world and young people in particular because I'm hoping you can get a better life um, than you know my generation had so um, this is the time when all the activities of the heart start especially in the in the mid mid um, teens and early 20s a lot of things are happening in your life you're beginning to wonder which direction should you take in life and so that's why I'm picking today um, to talk about love. Another thing again about love is because of the lifestyle we live nowadays. Uh, there's so much technology in our face. I mean, this being part of a, you know, all the social media activities. And so you're constantly fighting against so much. Each time you turn a page or you look at a screen, you see someone looking so amazing and you want to be like that and you don't know what is behind them achieving that kind of image or look. You go overboard to try and recreate things like that. So it's important that we shouldn't encourage you to get to that level where you're putting everything out there just to be like the next person, which you don't know what they've gone through to achieve that kind of look. Another thing you're gonna be finding out again is heartbreaks happen. Um, as you get to this certain age, uh, you, you think you love someone, you think you have feelings for someone, and you don't know if this person has similar feelings towards you. So now you're beginning to feel you don't know where you belong. Should I, should I open up my heart? Should I close up my heart? And so people start to get heartbroken. I, I had a story recently, this is like one of my daughter's friends, and she's quite young and she's change as many boyfriends as, as you can imagine now this is not where i'm going to say her boyfriends don't have boyfriends it's it's entirely your choice but this talk today is going to start guiding you what you should be looking out for when you're beginning to think about those kind of things do i do i want to have a relationship and what kind of relationship should i be having so this message is all about Something that I would have given to a younger version of me if if my life was just starting now What would I have told myself to look out for when going into this? Area of life called love where your heart is being um, I call it emotional investment. What am I investing? You're investing your emotion and so how much of it do you want to invest into this thing that you call love? So there are so many people that will come into your life as you are at this stage in life. So many people will come and they'll be coming for so many reasons. You don't know what the reasons are. You know, when I talk about love here, I'm not also talking about just affairs and boyfriend and girlfriend. I'm talking about even general friends where you, you tend to now want to share all you know with this person and you want to be friendly, you want to be there. You want to support them but what you don't know is is this person willing to support you too to guide you as you are growing so this is where we have to start being very careful because the emotional investment is quite a big one it's it's one of those investment that's that's priceless emotions is priceless when you get a heartbreak it takes a lot of weight for people to recover from it so as you're investing your emotions into people best best friend girlfriend boyfriend you need to be very careful and know what this person's intentions is to be around you and that's what i'm saying that um people are going to be coming into your life now which you don't know what their reasons are most times you're going to find that People don't really care about your emotions. They don't really care because I'll tell you something that was interesting that someone said to me the other day, we were just chatting. And this was inside, um, there are only a few things that are true in life. And he said, the only truth in life is death. And everything else is reality.
true is that and everything else is reality and what we were so curious about trying to find out what this meant he said the way you see life is from your point of view and that's the honest truth you know if something may happen between you and somebody and as far as you're concerned you were the right one you you were the one who was offended you were the one who got this thing you did this you did you did this and the other person did that did that did that so at every point in time we tend to feel the victim so we always feel that you know what well, this person hurt me in so many ways and you know what we then do we use that reason to start it could, you could be what they call malice you start holding grudges you start getting angry you start reacting to something and that's because your reality said this is what it should have been and the other person's reality is also saying the same thing to that person that person was right and everything went the way the other way for the other person so we are looking at two angles or whatever it is and that's why sometimes you hear people say it depends on whose point of view and then you also hear um there are so many sides to a story so when you start investing your emotion in people calling it love be careful because depending on your point of view you may really really be hurting you may be hurting so badly that you feel you have been offended the other person doesn't feel that way so this is why investment you have to know how much of you that you're going to be given out and I'm going to be chatting and chatting and trying to make you understand that most times people don't really care about how you feel. People don't really care. It takes a lot for people to, today, we were, me and my daughter were just chatting about it and she's wishing, you know, I can't remember, there's a movie they watched and some, some person had a really close friend that was really, really caring. And she said, I wish I had a friend like that. I say it's very rare. It's extremely rare before you and someone can connect to that point where everything is put on. So, young hearts that you are starting life, this is not the time to start throwing out every little emotion you have into somebody else and hoping they are going to give you back same return. It's not going to be like that. So that's the big message here for you to watch who you're sharing your emotion with how much of it you're investing in this person and how you deal with whatever comes out of it and one of the big message the big one that came to me recently is watch actions watch people's actions if you follow me on facebook i come up with these things every day like i go to sleep and something hits me it just came out of the blues watch people's actions not what they say because people would tell you what you want to hear this happens all the time and this has happened to me over my years of being here i'm 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 a very verbal person i'm a vocal person and that's why you can see me i'm happy to chat with you for hours on end on 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 screen and there are people who would rather die than be seen in front of a camera so we all vary like that. So for me, I like to hear. I like to hear what people are telling me because I speak from my heart. So when I want to tell you something, I tell you how I feel about it. Now the difference is there are people out here in this life who will not tell you as anything is. And there's something around somewhere that there is no art. There is no art to tell the mind, the, the person's mind on the face, the mind's construction on the face. That's what he says. There's no art to tell the mind's construction on the face. So you are there thinking, what I'm hearing is real. So you hear people tell you, I love you so much. You are the star, you're my life. You, without you, I cannot survive. My life depends on you. And you take it in as my kind of person. I take all that in and I'm happy to deal with it. Not knowing that this person is just being verbal. That in their action, they don't mean one word or what they've said. So that's what you really need to be careful of. So what you want to do is watch people's actions. Actions don't lie, but words lie. So 
watch what people are saying what, how people are acting to you how people relate to you if you were going to do something and they said something do they say something and then they act another thing the minute you start noticing the actions that's when you realize that this person does not really mean what they say to you so every relationship you have it should be a question of give and take give me a little i give you a little I was in Marvin Gaye, I can't remember one of the musicians who said I want we want 50-50 love. You're gonna find that it's very rare to get 50-50 love. Very, very rare. And this is where again we're talking about the actions. So as you're starting your life slowly now, be very, very, very careful about this action thing and don't wait for this. Oh yeah, you give me 50, I'll give you 50. Okay. Life is too short. Life is too short for you to hang around people who, you, who are not worth your time. Life is too short to be with people who are not worth being around you. So if you now start hanging around people who are giving you so much pain and so much stress and so much unhappiness, what you're going to find is you're going to waste half of your life with the wrong crowd. So be careful. Be very careful. Do not waste your life hanging around people who do not support who you are as a person. Do not tangle yourself into the wrong relationship and regret for the rest of your life. The key word we've mentioned is action. Watch the way people act around you. Don't listen because you want to watch things like, do they respect you? Do they treat you with dignity? Do, do, they, do, do they allow you to carry yourself with your pride, who you are? Do they find that they can be responsible around you or allow you to be a responsible person around them? Now, some of the kind of friends I've had recently, I find there, there was a crowd I, I, I hung around. I found that they could, I felt it. I felt like they, they tolerated me. It's okay for her to be here. But I knew I had so much more to offer. And I didn't see myself growing out of that. I didn't see myself blossoming in this relationship with these people. That was when I knew, no, 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 this is not the kind of place I want to be. Because if you are with people and you feel stagnated, if you are with people and you feel there's a part of you that's not coming out, if you're with people and you feel like you're being concealed and locked up and you cannot be yourself, then that's not the crowd you want to hang around. You want to be with people that you feel at home with, that you can be yourself, that your spirit is free. And so, so many people that I know of are suffering in the name of this thing called love. And the reason I like to pick love really quickly or get us started on love is my mom died in that process. Marriage, my dad was not the kind of man who believed in the one man, one wife relationship. And so my dad constantly, constantly had affairs. I have loads of half sisters all over the place. And you can imagine what the poor woman went through. Okay, so you might say culturally that was normal way back in africa um the culture encouraged that men could be whatever they had to be but my mom suffered so much in silence and my big sister went through the same route she had a very horrible husband who did not allow her to grow to become the woman that we knew her to be in the end she died from all types of complications and I know lots of friends at the moment who are going through really, really difficult relationships. Who, what has happened to them? You know, you could just see them like diminishing every day. Remember last time when we, we did this talk, I said, in every, every day we, we have thoughts that are either elevating us or diminishing us. And so if you are in some kind of relationship that all the thoughts that are coming to you are constantly holding you down, then that's not a healthy relationship. And I have had my bouts of stress in relationship, which I have talked over and over on screen. But you see, the thing is, because I'm a naturally 
very strong spirit. One of the things we mentioned in that 10 tips was being spiritual, which I know one of the topics in this series of messages to you will be about spirituality. If you have a strong spirit, eventually you will be led back on the right track. But lots of people struggle with that because they are not getting there. The spirit is struggling to, to, to pull them out of the dark that they found themselves into. And so that's why I'm really, really hoping that none, none of you, none of you who are happy to watch the things I talk about will get to that level because you remember this when you start experiencing things like this. No one can cure love. It's, love is not the kind of thing you go to the doctor and you say, listen, I'm suffering from heartbreak and the doctor says, here, here's your medication, you can drink this and you'll be fine. No psychiatrist can deal with it. Nobody out there can handle the issues of love. You, who's experiencing it, can deal with And I can tell you, there was an instance in my family where um, one of my sisters was having this relationship with somebody for nearly 11 years and the whole family was saying to her this is not going anywhere you know like when you're on the outside you can see and she would not hear it she was adamant did not listen to anyone was ready to fight anyone who dared to, to talk to her about this relationship in the end it did not work out well it did not work out well so it is one of those things that nobody can cure, no therapist can deal with. It is only you who's experiencing that, that can deal with it. So prevention is better than cure, they say. So if you, don't, if you don't put yourself in that situation where you have to struggle with these scenarios, and you do this one thing I've said do, watch actions instead of words, you're gonna find that you can cope with relationships a lot better. There is always someone out there for you. Even in the sense of just friends or in the sense of a, 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 a typical life partner, there is someone out there who can deal with your kind of personality. So don't ever allow yourself to be bullied and pushed and dragged to that stage where you feel, if it's not this one, there's nobody else. Or, you know, I, I, there's a saying where I come from, they say, have bread is better than none. I can't remember if that's what it is, but you know, you think I'd rather have this half person who doesn't care about me than not have anyone at all. No, there's always someone out there. All you have to do is be patient with yourself and keep looking. Don't go into relationships that will end up killing you because people die from it. People die from heartbreaks. People, people get all kinds of illnesses. You, you hear of depression, you hear of um, heart attacks, you hear of high blood pressure, you hear of all kinds of things and all of this is coming from love going bad. Um, your life is far more precious than these scenarios that we just explained. So do not put yourself in any situation where things start to go completely wrong and then you cannot pull yourself out again. If all or everything else fails, just concentrate on what you have to offer life. Um, and this is a very good point because I remember um, one of my friends who was experiencing something really difficult like this and I kept advising her, just find, find a hobby, find something you enjoy doing. And Because what it is, you know, the way the mind works is the mind likes to concentrate on one thing at a time. That's what they say, the mind only can deal with one thing at a time. So if you have encouraged your mind to just focus on the one thing being this person, what will happen is everything else disappears from your radar. And so all you're doing is focusing on this one person and then the pressure becomes too much. But if you distract yourself, this is where engaging yourself in other things come in. If you take on a hobby, if you take on a skill, if you take on a training, if you take a trip, just go on holiday somewhere. I know it's hard, especially when children are involved and at, at your stage, young people, you're not there yet. But that's a good thing. Because since you're not there, that means you can guide yourself in a better light. And that's why I say people like me struggle with that because I didn't have anyone to tell me things like this that I'm telling you. So find yourself some hobby. 
I remember reading a magazine once that was trying to focus on love and what the person said was if you find you keep going to your phone to try and to try and pick up the phone and phone this person just take a book and read instead if you're reading a book your mind will be so busy you will not remember that the phone is there to make that phone call so completely take your mind off it distract yourself and you're gonna find that you're gonna be a happier person eventually from this whole thing that's gone wrong my personal life experience has been ups and down completely crazy i've been there i've gone through all the stages of these things and that's why i can talk about it um i survived the pains um of without anyone guiding me um i mentioned about my mother or my big sisters and all of that what you find is especially with relationships is always really the kind nice ones that struggle and suffer because what happens you have given everything you feel it is ideal you, you remember i mentioned in the last video where i watch all these wedding wedding videos i i find them really fascinating and the same old story you're being told you you do take this person for better for worse for richer for poorer for whatever and both of you are standing down there and doing all the usual i do's and later, it is not the same thing one year later things are changing and it gets worse and it gets worse and it gets worse and then people start to break down and things start to happen it is not that thing you're hearing at the altar that's your reality your reality is going to be different so this is where you need to now start thinking how do i cope when things don't happen the way i'm hoping it should happen i don't want you to be another victim because there's so many victims out there so many i mean love is the one thing that is so confusing that there is no one point there's no one way of looking at love everybody looks at it from their natural their their personal point of view but once you have some major pointers to help you you're going to find that you can handle it a lot better than most people i want you to protect your heart and i want you to be a survival and remember we talked about the actions not the words so one of the other thing i want you to also remember in love people say opposites attract generally but i say in love that's that rule please listen to that rule with they say a pinch of salt just just watch that rule really carefully now i explain to you opposites do not attract in love why because you are human beings with feelings and emotions so examples you like going out and he likes staying at home you like dancing and he doesn't like dancing you like going on holidays and he doesn't like traveling you like um what i did so many things i can think of you like football he likes football and you hate it he likes drinking and you don't want to smell alcohol um he smokes and you hate the smell of cigarette so you you like looking after your image and he doesn't even want to go near the shower or when he does he just picks anything and throws on his body you like a clean crisp looking home and he just throws his things all over the place now do you see how you are going to struggle to cope in that relationship because while you will be screaming that this house is messy and dirty he doesn't say it or the other way around while you might be saying oh i really want to go out and have some fun today he just wants to sit down and watch tv so you're distracting each other now what you're going to find from some of the things i've read is that's where they, they say law of energy vibration comes in now they say that all of us are constantly in motion in life and it's true instance for instance me i wake up in the morning and i know exactly the things i want to do in that day i would have told myself i'm gonna do this do this do this do this and by the time the day is over i would have achieved them or closest to achieving some of them now that's your energy your energy is going some places it's decided these are the things i'm going to do so you're constantly in motion 
all of us are so these motions are these things you're doing so you're deciding i want to go dancing and he says i don't want to dance i want to clean up the house and say the house is clean already i want to put things in this way he's throwing all over the place so your energy is going this way his energy is going that way or the other way and what happens is the minute you start having that friction it's called negative energy negative vibration now that's where the problem starts to come in because if you are still believing opposites attract tell me where the attraction is at this stage you are struggling to cope so what you want to try and do i had one lady a friend of mine come the other day and we were just chatting and we're doing here and she said oh my daughter's getting married and oh my goodness what a what an amazing guy she's getting married to us really how do you know she said they're similar in every way they love going to movies they love traveling they love doing this. so they're constantly together because they enjoy similar things i'm not saying it's going to be a carbon copy of you but you're going to find that if you love similar things it is difficult for you to start fighting each other over the things you love so that's why you should not be listening to this opposites attract because when you're oppositing yourself you are going to be creating negative energy and you are going to be fighting all the way that's love so be careful the time green that works i mean one of the things i also mentioned was or noted was you you like being careful with money and he just spends or or she's or he's being very careful with money and she's just spending now to bring that money in becomes a problem so he's made this effort to put the money together and she just comes and splashes it off in one item how is he going to be happy about that or how is she going to be happy about that these are the opposites so if both of you are agreeing on you know what we're going to put the money together and then we're going to buy something major for the family and you know that will make sense or i want to have just two kids and i he says i want to have seven kids you start fighting negatives negatives do not take that opposite thing into love try and watch out for people who are similar to you so that your connection is there there should be a connection and that's what i mean by you know law of energy vibration you should your energy should be vibrating towards the same direction okay so we're gradually getting there um what was the next thing i talked about i think those are the things i noted down so anyway i i want us to make sure that life makes sense to you and you start to pick on the things that work for you remember this thing about the opposites and love energy vibration remember this thing about watching the action and how this person behaves around you so these two major things are what i want you to really hold on to and i want you to really have the best life that there is out there uh, remember you have a lot in you and you have to shine bring out the best of you remember we also talked about it in the last one where we talked about people who really dampen other people down you you have so much that you want to bring out and this person this person that you've taken on and called love is not telling you that you're not capable of what you say you're capable of now that person is not going to help you grow if you go into a relationship with that person what you're going to find is it's not going to happen this is why i was talking about one plus one making three instead of two or even one as they would like to call it one one plus one should be three in relationships where you two you two bring your strengths and make a stronger bunch than just killing each other's strengths so have the best life there is out there and please do subscribe because there's going to be more of these messages to you young people coming your way and if you can follow me on facebook as well because i do write a lot about similar things on how to empower you to deal with life as it comes um i look forward to seeing you in the next one and thank you so much god bless you